Ladies and gentlemen, internet, we need no introduction. Let the hacking commence. Given we are now at 5.0, I gotta say this first hack has been mentioned a lot, going as far back as 1.0 in this video series, so it's about time we talk about it. Many survivor challenges involve bottlenecks, where tribes are forced to clash by design, and never has that been more of a case than in the attack zone challenge, first introduced in season 5, Thailand, but later reiterated with season 8, All Stars. And it's the All Stars variant that we're going to be talking about in this video. This challenge involved players racing across balance beams to grab flags on the other end. Each tribe had two players on the beams at any point in time and it all came down to, you guessed it, speed and balance. Your tribe needed 20 flags to win, but the catch was that if you ever found yourself bottlenecked face to face with an opposing tribe member in the middle, the two of you would enter the attack zone, where you would need to wrestle your opponent off the beam. First in the water has to restart the course while the winner can keep going. Throughout the challenge, it became apparent that one player was leagues ahead of everyone else, both in speed and balance, but really just speed. Boston Rob. Boston Rob was so fast, he would just dart from one platform to the next like he was floating on air. Compare that to his teammate, Rupert, who I'm not even sure made it to the halfway point at any point in time in this entire challenge, and there is a serious serious discrepancy in skill. Not only that, but Rob was good at the attack zone too. Opposing players against him had to improvise just to stand a chance, but they never did. So, okay, get the lay of the land. If you have a hot commodity such as Rob, who is really, really good at what this challenge demands, what would you say is the optimal strategy here? Well, late in the challenge, the tribes were almost even in flags, and Sue then told her tribe exactly what needed to happen. She told them that she was going to be throwing her spot in the line so Rob could go sooner. Because only two players could go at a time and every player had to compete, this meant time would get wasted with slower players attempting to run the course and then failing. So Sue jumped down, and then everyone else did too. Rob instantly went again and again and again, and then his tribe's victory was never in doubt. Really, the hack here is just to cast your ego aside and let stronger players carry you to victory. No shame, it's a game. Not everyone's good at everything. Do what you gotta do. Boston. Also, before we move on, I quickly wanna point out this important thing to note. We saw this creative strategy occur in the next season as well in Survivor Vanuatu, when Scout did the same thing, mercifully sacrificed her spot in a relay race so faster players could run the course sooner. I wouldn't be surprised if this has happened in other seasons throughout the history of the show, but these are just two examples to talk about. Scout deliberately dumps her juice. New strategy. She's gonna go to the end of the line. Let the fast ones run the course. The second act is from season 33, Survivor Millennials vs. Generation X at the final nine in an immunity challenge called Push Me, Pull you. It's a basic challenge involving players holding a steady, firm grip on two handles, applying tension between them to keep a bar in the middle from falling and hitting the ground. If your bar falls, you're out, and the last person left standing wins. At the onset, you might think this challenge is all about strength, or perhaps about your grip strength. Do you have the muscle to keep pressure applied either in your arms or even just your hands? Well, as you would expect for this video, it turns out that didn't matter that much, as we saw Adam go on to win this challenge, someone who I wouldn't say is the most physically superior player out there, beating out the likes of players such as Jay and Ken. If you go back and rewatch this challenge, Adam barely looks like he was struggling. In fact, he was the last person to show any signs of slipping. What Adam did to win this challenge is easy to miss. Simply put, instead of applying pressure inward where you take both your hands and you push them together, forcing the handles against each other, he lifted one hand slightly up and the other slightly down. He applied pressure in opposite directions, locking the bar in the middle in place. Yeah, he still had to maintain tension on both handles, which did require strength, but it took far less of a toll on his grip and ultimately got him the win. This challenge went by quickly, less than four minutes in and most of the cast was eliminated, but Adam used one tiny little maneuver and there you go. A difficult task becomes a lot less so. Three, two, one. And this challenge is on. You start to feel your hands shake a little. David is the first to drop. It looks so easy watching it. Will drops out of nowhere. You just let up for a moment. That tension release 
And that's what happened to Brett. That is the key, the right finesse. Jay, Ken, and Adam fighting for immunity. Jay with his first movement, but a nice recovery. You have been out here only four minutes. And I know it seems like a lot longer. Adam's still solid. Ken drops, and we're down to two. Both guys feeling it. Jay drops. Adam wins. Individual immunity will live to see day 34. I think that I won that challenge not because I was the strongest at, like, grip strength or whatever, uh, but because I think I figured out the best way to do it that, that other people just didn't figure out. Everyone else was just pulling straight out. I pulled the bottom and pushed at the top, and it sort of locked it into place. So I think I could have gone uh, for, for a while there. Cause and effect, the domino effect. The third hack is from the final eight of season 17, Gabon, and it involves the video game player Kenny switching up a strategy out of the gate to fall behind early, but eventually go on to take the lead and win the challenge. We've seen this concept talked about in previous videos in this series. A player takes a different approach at the start of a challenge and appears to be in last, but then as the challenge progresses, it turns out that early choice to do something different would put them ahead and ultimately get them to win. This challenge involved players stacking a trail of dominoes across a beam laden with trip wires that, if tripped, would likely cause their dominoes to fall over. The first player to create a trail that would successfully go from the start to the end and trigger their mechanism at the end would win. And it needs to be said, we have seen this challenge play out on six different seasons thus far, and Kenny is the only player to use this different strategy, and what's more, Gabon was the first season to feature this challenge. I'm surprised nobody else has ever watched the tapes. This challenge even showed up on Winners at War. The hack, as usual, is pretty simple. Every player in Survivor outside of Kenny always began to stack their dominoes at the beginning of their beam, quickly adding more down the line. Kenny did the opposite. Right at the beginning of the challenge, he rushed all the way to the end and began stacking first there. Because this challenge was all about speed, Kenny's tactic allowed him to not only literally learn the ropes quicker, but also allowed him to rush to the end with less on the line. If in the event that he was rushing to the end, he triggered the ropes on his way, he didn't have anything to lose because he was starting from the back. While he would still need to cover as much ground as the other players, in his case, every trip back and forth would have less rope to deal with, not more. Kenny was the first to finish his trail, and even though he didn't line up his dominoes perfectly on his first push, he still went on to win the challenge. His unique tactic put him behind early, but eventually proved to be the superior strategy. Maddie, Corinne, starting at the front. Kenny moving to the end, working his way backwards. One wrong move on those trip ropes could knock over everything you've built so far. Do not panic, take your time. <laughs> Maddie seems to have the early lead. Maddie has a bit of a lead. Kenny coming on strong now. Suddenly, Kenny's nearly complete. Jeff, I got it. Kenny's gonna give it a shot. Kenny's go, looking go. good. Go, go, go. Kenny wins immunity. Idle hands make for the devil's tools. Hack number four is all about being first to the punch and not being afraid to go all in. Defense may win championships, but guess what? The offense does too, and quite frankly, it's way more fun if they do. Episode five of season 25, Survivor Philippines, involved a reward challenge where players had to hold a paddle with an idol resting on top and then attempt to knock off their opponent's idol before their opponent did the same thing to them. It was a 1v1, winner take all, get in the mud, get in the pig pen, and just do your best to clobber your opponent. It was a game of chicken, although not with the chicken idol. You had to defend when your opponent struck and eventually strike when you best felt you could catch your opponent off guard. And then of course, cue me saying, or so you would think. Or so you would think. While we saw lots of strategies play out, all involving a bit of O and a bit of D, without a doubt, the best strategy proved to be one involving no defense whatsoever. Pure offense, as quick as possible, surprising your opponent, startling them like a kamikaze bomber, but in a pig pen. We first saw Michael, Mr. Scoops, use this strategy. You throw your idol as high as you can in the air, fully knowing it's going to hit the ground. But 
in that sweet time, that time in between it leaving your paddle and it eventually landing, you propel your body into your opponent's hand and do everything in your power to knock off their idol. We saw Denise do this not long after, as well as Malcolm, who would use this creative strategy to clutch the challenge for his tribe. It turned out that it was less a game of chicken and more a game of quick on the draw. Play fearless and you would drastically increase your odds of scoring a point. On a show that largely predicates itself on playing to not lose, this was a challenge all about playing to win. Oh, Scoot with a nice move. Scores for 10 day. Wow. Denise would like to prove herself right here. I'll be careful, RC. Denise with a nice job. Palabal scores. Malcolm could make himself very popular, bringing home the reward for Tan Day. We even saw this strategy pop up three seasons later in Survivor Kageon when Spencer would go on to replicate the same strategy and win his tribe a point. And you know what, since we're already talking about him, speaking of the young lad, let's save one of the most creative strategies for last. Hack number five is indeed from Spencer Bledsoe, but it happens on season 31, not 28, Survivor Cambodia taking place at the final seven immunity challenge. This challenge had players race across a series of obstacles above water to retrieve a key, then they would race back to the beach to unlock a set of puzzle pieces and the first person to finish their puzzle wins. Heard that description before? Yeah, it's about as stock standard of a challenge as you can get. Jeremy proves to be the fastest, first to get to his key and first back to the puzzle, and it turns out the puzzle is only five pieces. Should be a piece of cake, right? How difficult can a five piece puzzle be? You could finish that in like 15 seconds. Well, Jeremy doesn't, but once Spencer gets his puzzle pieces on the table, he literally finishes it in less than 15 seconds. It's almost as if he didn't need to look at the pieces on the board like he already knew the solution before he even opened the bag. Oh yeah, the hack. Let's talk about the hack. How did he do it so quickly? The creative strategy here that netted Spencer the win is one of the most unique in this entire video series. It might be the most, and dare I say it might be the most in the history of Survivor. Prior to going on season 31, Spencer reviewed the tapes and rewatched the latest season, season 30, the one right before, Worlds Apart, and noticed how in the very first challenge in the first episode of that season, the tribes were presented with three different puzzles and they could pick which one they wanted to do. A 50 piece puzzle, a 10 piece puzzle, or a five piece puzzle. For whatever reason, neither of those three tribes chose the five piece puzzle, which meant it went unused and never made air, which meant Spencer took note of this and considered the possibility that it might return in a future season. So upon rewatch, he froze the frame, outlined the puzzle, memorized exactly how to put it together, and then skipped off to compete in season 31, Survivor Cambodia. And what do you know, there was the exact same unused, unaired five piece puzzle from the previous season. I love this creativity, the depths it took to watch it pan out. Props to Spencer, and may I say to any other Survivor superfans out there who may have picked up on the producers reusing old challenges. I'll just reiterate that every detail counts, utilize everything you can within reason to get ahead. You are not out of this challenge because there is no working closer and closer. This is the kind of puzzle you solve in an instant and Spencer just did. I gotta tell you, we have tested that puzzle a lot. Nobody ever has done it that fast, ever. That was amazing. And that's it. Challenge Hacks 5.0 is in the bag, or maybe out of the bag, and then onto the table. Easily solved in around hmm, 15 minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed the latest entry in this series. It goes to show when you analyze the details, who knows what kind of out of left field tactics you'll dig up. Regardless, thank you guys for watching this far. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me as often as I make these videos. And don't forget, on your way out, sometimes there is more than meets the eye, or makes the final edit. And I will see you in the next one, once hell freezes over. One more twist at the auction. Abby bought an advantage in this game. It's a note, you wanna read it? Move directly to the final round in this challenge. You have a one in three shot at winning immunity. She can't win this. She can't climb. But watch how good her knee is. Here we go. We have Abby, who bought her way into the final round. Survivor's ready. Go. Abby's through first, then Carter. Abby is whipping through these knots, pulling away from Carter. Oh my god. 
Abby continues to fly through this course. Abby now at the last gate of rope. She gets through these knots. Abby will win immunity and be safe at Tribal Council. Abby slides down. Abby wins immunity. Is safe at tonight's Tribal Council and guaranteed a one in six shot at winning this game. Oh, sorry. Sorry, are you okay? I wish I would be voting off Mike today. Mike is really annoying.